in your. Hey, your what time I was in the time. shower? That son of a bitch used to. She's so cheap. That son of a bitch. She made me go back to Home Depot for seventy five cents, man. Because there was there was uh too, too much money on some one of the things. She goes, oh look, it's seventy five cents. Where is it? I said, I don't know where it is. She goes, you gotta go back and get it. I said, you want to go back to Home Depot for seventy five cents? She goes, yeah, I do. I says, oh, okay, give me the receipt. And I went back to Home Depot and I argued with the cashier and I got the seventy five cents back. I came back and said, hey, just get seventy five cents here. There it is. Yeah, shove it up your ass. I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. How are you doing everybody? This is Jimmy the Bull at MuscleMuscle.com. I'm here today to share with you my personal power straps. I'll help you become the best power bodybuilder I could possibly be. Training through injury, gaining strength. And now I'm going to share with you how you can get the extra mile in the gym, pushing and pulling and getting through the exercise. These are the best power straps you'll ever use. Go to MuscleMonster.com to get the full demonstration. Welcome back to another installment of Iron Therapy. I am here today, yes, I'm Dave Palumbo, with our RX Muscle Staff psychotherapist, Leslie Timble, and our special guest today, the bull himself, Jimmy Pelletier. What's up, guys? Nice to meet you. Look, you got oh. a globe in the background there, Jimmy. Yeah, I see What's that. The round globe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I did that on purpose for, for the... <laughs> All those fucking globe heads out there, you know. Ah, I see. Yeah, I, I noticed something on Instagram before, and I was like, uh, it was a globe, right? Right. And then, it, and I had a ship upside down in the ocean, and 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 the, and the, and, the, and, the, and the saying was, zoom in, you know, with the Hubble telescope, right? You know, zoom in and show me a ship sailing upside down, you know, maybe down by Lee's house somewhere, you know. Yeah. Show me a ship. You know, like why not in real time, right? Give me, you know, get the Hubble telescope, turn it around, and zoom in on the freaking the, the fake ball, right? And then, and then, you know, catch the ship upside down, sailing with all the people partying, and the they usually got a pool on there, right? So the pool, everybody's diving and swimming off the diving board and shit, right? And the, and the, and they're down here, right, in the ship, right? Okay. Good idea. Yeah, yeah. What's wrong with that? You know, why I, I don't like you it. end the end the debate? Once and for right. all, this is what I'm trying. Right, right. yo, turn this, turn it around, zoom <laughs> in, and let's see the ship down there like that, right? Upside down, everybody partying, having a good time, sitting there, standing on the on the deck there, watching the whatever it is. Let's see it, and then we'll shut our mouths off. I won't say a <laughs> word about the flat Earth ever again. All right, how about that? <laughs> That's true. I'm I'm serious. I'm I'm, I'm very serious. I like the, the real experiment. Body. I like the originality of the experiment. We should try it. This is why they make these, Dave. You see, because this is the reality right here. You understand? Oh, I see. Right. That's what that is. You put it on your wall, right? You don't you don't you don't screw that to the wall, right? <laughs> when you see the guys on a Navy ship, what are they doing? When they're up on the bridge, the Navy guys, what are they doing? Right? They clear the deck like that. They go, "What are we gonna do? We're gonna bomb the Japanese." Yeah. Where are they located? What do they do? Right away, boom! They go like this. Okay, we're gonna hit over here, and we're gonna go over there, and we're gonna nail them over there with the with the with the torpedoes from over here. Uh, Captain, that's that's about 200 miles away. No problem. We're gonna do 200 miles. 200 miles on the ball or 200 miles on a flat map. That's the reality right there. <laughs> I end my case. That's it. All right. All right. One more flat well, earth. I'm done. Today's show is about the victim mentality. I, I, I'm not even <sighs> sure uh, Jimmy qualifies, but he, he seems to have qualified over the last couple of weeks. He's seeming very aggressive and sure of himself today, though. I don't know if that's an act he's putting on or if the testosterone he's on is kicking in, Leslie. But explain what victim mentality is. Okay. So basically, 
there's some characteristics of a victim mentality. And one is basically feeling like a victim, even though the evidence suggests otherwise. So part of that is blaming a lot of other things or people and not taking personal responsibility. Um, another is feeling that you have no control over the situation. Now, it's important to take a definition and really kind of break it down to see this does this apply to Jimmy or not? So I'm really excited to talk about this today <laughs> with Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, do you think that you're a, you portray yourself as a victim uh, when you really do have control over things in your life? Bro, let me explain one thing. <laughs> what is this right here? What does that say on the top there? Suffolk County Office of Child Support. And That's Forces. right. That's right. Okay. I'm not going to show you the amount on the bottom because it's astronomical. Okay. So the deal is that wasn't my fault. All right. She threw me out of the house. I came home one day from work and she told me I got to talk. There. I was in the shower. I says, okay, yeah. let me get out of the shower. She goes, no, I want to talk now. I said, well, I'm in the shower. Give me a minute. Let me get out of the shower. No, she says, listen, I want you out of the house. I'm like, what? I got out of the shower. I got, I got dry. I got dressed. I says, wait a minute, babe. Let's talk about this. Like, uh, Can we go to the diner or go get some dinner? Or, you know, yeah. She goes, I don't, I don't want to be with you. I'm done. I said, well, what did I do? You know, she goes, all you do is you work with your brother. You're having a, you know, you're out all day. I said, well, I'm working. What do you mean I work? Of course, of course I'm out all day. What do you mean? You know, she goes, I want you out. I just want you. I said, yeah, that's it? You just want me out? Yeah, I got two kids here laying on a uh, baby. I want you out. I said, can we go see a therapist? Go, go talk to a doctor? Do so. I want you out. And that was it. For two weeks, bro, she didn't want, she wanted no nothing. She, had, she was storming out of the house, storming back in, wouldn't talk to me. You know how comfortable it is that sitting in your, if you're in the house with your wife, she don't talk to you for two weeks? Because she, she, it's horrible. That's, is that a victim? No, that's not a victim. That's a, that's a victim of a circumstance, but I'm not a victim. Like, uh, like Leslie's portraying, and I love Leslie. We're supposed to get married. I'm not saying anything bad because I already got a text from some guy who wanted to kill me because I said something about you. All right. So anyway, make a long story short. I want I want to make it very clear to all the fans out there that you know me and Leslie are friends and we talk and you know and there's no uh, bad feelings or so. I don't want no threatening texts that you know I'm done. I'm finished, and you're coming after me. Whatever it is. I, I mean, I, meanwhile, that guy texts back. He, he apologized and he, he didn't know we were friends. You know, so I said, listen, a lot of it is just, you know, uh, shit gathered up in my throat, you know, but Leslie helps me out. That's all is it is. Frankie Blue, you know? was it Frank, what was his name? Frankie Blue Balls? What was his name? Yeah, yeah Frankie Balls or Frank, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Frankie something, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, he texted back. He was text back. He was nice. You know, he was, uh, you know, because I was like, okay. no, I said, you know. I, I don't really, I don't like threats, you know what I mean? And then we text back and, you know, I, I told him, I said, we're friends, don't worry about it, you know, so. So anyway, I'm driving in the truck. Let me give you another example, Leslie, while I'm all, all out here on the phone. So right. you, you talk about this victim stuff. So wh you, what do you exactly mean, like, victim? Like, uh, I, you play victim, in other words. Right? In other words, like, I play the victim, like, <laughs> I don't know, is that, is that what that means? Like, uh, I, I, like, shit just can't happen, like, all the time? Or am I just uh, let, 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 why don't we address the the wife situation? So okay, yeah. yeah, let's do one at a time. Now, just because someone has, because I got I got a few with them today. I actually I came yeah. home. I had to show all the windows in the house because my neighbors they they complain when I'm when I when I when I do shows. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. So let me get to the the wife thing. Your ex wife is a little crazy, and not all women are balanced. So I think we can all agree on that piece. Yes, so, Jimmy, I think it's important that you preface what her profession was prior to you marrying her or even while you were married to her. What her profession was? Yes. Well, let me tell you about that, too. <laughs> right, how's, how's the arm looking, baby? Look like, does it look like I'm getting you, a little you more definitely look bigger. Yeah. You definitely look bigger. Stomach sure. going down a little bit? Nice, yeah. getting trim. Yep. Okay. Anyway, so, you know, when I was dating a girl, you know, I, I met her through a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, Sean. You actually, I think you know him, Dave, Sean McCartney. Yes, I know Sean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good guy. Good so guy. I, I used to, I, I told I told this story many times. I used to come, I used to work in this city. I used to come home, uh, you know, late at night. And uh, I used to stop by the bar there. It was like summertime. And I pull up with the car, you know, Sean was outside because he don't like smoke. You know, he don't, he don't smoke or nothing. So he would always be sitting outside. So I pull up, my bullshit with him. And he's like, where are you going? I says, I'm going home, Sean. You know, he goes, why don't you come up for a beer? I said, I don't want to go in that dive. You know what I mean? He says, no, I just go stand by the door. Yeah, so I, told I, I, what, what, what was the establishment? Huh? <laughs> what, was the, what was the place that Sean was bouncing at? It was the strip club. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. I, yeah, yeah. I, that's important. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Sean, uh, Sean's a good dude, man. Anyway, yeah. make a long story short, I used to go, you know, just right, just in the doorway, Leslie. I wasn't a participant. I don't like those guys because I, I you know I used to bounce in those clubs. I used to throw them out all the time. Like, I, to me, it's a waste of time and it's like a waste of life. And guys, they get paid on Friday and they go and they throw all their money at the girl because she's flashing her breast. And then the guy's broke. He goes home and he had enough gas. He can put, put, can't put gas in his car when he's leaving the club. It's it's ridiculous. I still pass that place now when I go to work at I want one o'clock in the morning. I pass wow. there and they're all outside smoking, hanging. Out. I go look at these guys. What a waste. They're outside. It's one o'clock in the morning, and they're all standing there having a cigarette, talking, talk about what? You got you, you got you because you got the naked girls inside. I, I can't just I, I don't know. I can't get it. So anyway, I went inside the bar there, and I'm standing there, and uh, this girl walked by, and she gave me a smile. True story, you know. And I smiled back, you know. And I, I you know, she, she walked right by the door there. It was like uh, the bathrooms were over there. So I said, oh, she's she's cute, you know. I said, who's that girl, Sean? Oh, she's uh, you know, good girl, you know. I said, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know anything. You know, I don't know about personal shit with that place. I says, oh, good girl. Hey, oh, yeah. He goes, you know, it's just strictly business for her. And uh, that's it. You know, she don't bring the, the business home like a lot of these girls. She's, you know, straight. So, I don't know. He introduced me, whatever. I talked to her for a minute or two. I got a number. And that was it. And after that, we started the date. And then, you know, I, in, the, in the beginning, I thought it was cool. You know what I mean? But as time went on and I started developing feelings, I didn't really like the job anymore. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, once you start to care about somebody, you know, now you're thinking about your old lady up there with all these guys with their tongue, uh, uh, you know, for a dollar. I mean, it's sickening. You know, I used to go down there and she used to tell me, Jim, you got you to leave, man. You got to go home. I said, what do you mean I got to go home? He says, you, you, you got, I can see you're getting all irate. I says, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like what's going on. He goes, I know what this is. He can't. He goes, you can't, you know. So then my, my wife came up with an idea. She said, why don't you bounce? For, for Richie, you know, at the other clubs while I'm working. This way you're not sitting home on the weekend all night thinking about me over here. That's how I got the job over there. So that's what happened. I started bouncing over there. That's what happened. So then I took my frustration out on them because I knew my, 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 my wife was over there. So I was beating the shit out of all these guys, taking my shit out on those guys. You know, if I see the guy trying to touch the girl's ass, I go, oh. What are you doing? He goes, get your hand down. Sit back in that seat, I said. I see that shit again. I said, you're going right at the fucking door. All right, no problem. Man. Take it easy. Calm down. That's what I used to do. I used to frisk guys at the door. What time a cop showed up? You know, we don't allow guns in the club. The guy shows up. He's got uh, he's got a long coat on, right? He walks in. I said, yo, open your coat. I didn't even know he was a cop. He, he always just coat. He had two uh, nickel-plated, pearl-handled six-shooters in the fucking waist, right? So I'm, I'm looking at him. I go, you kidding me, right, guy? He goes, what do you want? What's the problem? He goes, I'm a cop. I said, I don't give a shit what you are. You look like Wyatt Earp. I said, you can't come in here. I said, put those guns in the car. Or you ain't coming in here. Bro, I'm coming in here. I said, yo, you ain't coming in here, bro. I said, it ain't happening unless you draw those things on me. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't coming in. So I know all the other bouncers came. The guy finally had to put the things in the car. Then he came in. You know, we said, all right, we won't charge you. It was like a $10 cover. You know, we let him in, you know. And then he turned around to me when he walked in. He goes, I remember you on the street. He goes, I remember you. Oh, I said, yeah. yeah, good. Remember me, man. I said, I really don't care. I said, you're a jerk off. And then he went back in the club, right? <laughs> So uh, that, that, that that was it, man. That was it. the place was bad news. I was always fighting. And listen, I, you know, listen, Leslie, I don't portray myself as a tough guy, you know, but I, I had my share of brawls and I always got in brawls. And I, those clubs I bounced for years, I was always brawling, you know, so. I think you're, I think it, you're neglecting the, uh, the, 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 the point that's oh, being tried oh, to be this, made. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I started going back in my past. Uh, what was they saying? So, uh, oh yeah. So I, I, I met her. And then you know, we, then we we were together for ten years or whatever. And then we had the, we had kids, and uh, I told Dave this story once before. My I went to was, his wedding. Right, you right, you came to my wedding. Right. It was in his backyard. Yeah. And it was all yeah. the girls that he worked with were there. Yeah, they were the whole the whole club. That that was it. Yeah. Every, and uh, yeah. So anyway, I I'm gonna tell this quick story because I'm talking about trouble. the victim. Now you, you might say, Leslie, that I put myself in that situation, right? Because. I married a stripper, you know. So before all, all my cousins were they were all telling me, you're out of your mind. What are you doing with a stripper? I says, I don't know. I, I like the girl, you know. They says, you're crazy. You, she's a stripper. You know, she's like like a, like a Bhutan, right? I said, listen, I, I think she's very nice. So anyway, I went to my mother's house. And I says, ma, I says, uh, I met this girl. 
she's a stripper, ma. I says, everybody's telling me that she's no good. She's a whore. She sleeps around. She's, she's, a, she's a stripper. So my mother sat me down and she says, listen, let me tell you something. She says, if you're a whore, you could be a whore in a bank wearing a suit and tie. It don't matter. She said, you, you can work with the executives and be a whore in the office. And I, and I, and I, I like a bell went off on my head. And I was like, man, my mother's right. You could be, if you're a whore, you could be a whore anywhere. What's the difference if I'm dating a stripper? <laughs> or I'm, trying, I'm, trying, I'm dating a, a bank executive or a lawyer or something, right? So my mother made me feel, that's that's why I moved ahead with it because my, my mom said that. It just, it resonated with me. And I was like, hey, she's right. So anyway, so in the end, she threw me out. Yeah, she did. And I had a lot of, you know. She threw you out, Jimmy. What was that? What did your mother say after she threw you out? My mother was very upset, man. She, as a matter of fact, she came over that night because uh, it was like 12, 1 in the morning. Uh, she left the, the kids somewhere. I had I had to go to the house. I, I bang on, It was one of her girlfriends. I was banging on her door. It was in Babylon somewhere. And I says, uh, they went to the door. I says, my kid's here? Because she wasn't home. And I, I wanted my kids. So uh, the girl goes, uh, yeah, the kids are here. They're, they're, they're inside this. I said, I don't give it to sleep. I says, wake them up, put their jackets on. I'm taking my kids. Yeah, but, uh, you know, your wife, I, I don't give a shit what my wife says. You know, get the kids or I'm coming in here. I'm getting my, get my kids right now. She says, all right, take it easy. She got the kids. I, I grabbed both my, my girls. I went in the car, threw them in the car. I went home that night. So it was like late at night. So she kept calling the house. What are you doing in the house? I said, I'm here with the kids. She says, I want you out of the house. I said, I'm not leaving the house. I said, I'm your husband. I'm staying right here. I'm, what do you mean? And then she hung up and then the mother called. What are you doing in that house? You don't belong in that house. He said, that's my daughter's house. I said, no, I'm the husband. It's my house, too. How about that there, Grace? I said, you know, she goes, I'm going to, I'll have you arrested. I, you're going to have me arrested? I said, I tell you what, you bring your ugly ass over here. Ring that doorbell. I have the cops here so fast. I said, you'll be in chains walking out of here. How about that? I said, come out of my house. Come out. I hung up on her, right? So anyway, that didn't go. The phone calls didn't go over good. <laughs> so uh, someone called my mother. I think she did. And she said, yeah, you got to get your son out of the house. And my mother ended up coming over there. And then like six cop cars came that night. You know, it was a it was a nightmare. You know, I wouldn't leave. I was sitting in a rocket chair just like this with my one daughter. I um, mean, the other daughter was sleeping on the couch. And the cops all came in. And they separated us. And they, the cops come over to me. They go, James, what's going on? I said, what do you mean what's going on? I said, I'm here with my, my children. That's what's going on. I says, why? He says, well, your wife said that you won't leave the house. I said, well, this is my house. I'm not divorced or separated yet. I said, this is my house. I'm a husband. What do you mean? What, I, what, do, you, what do you mean? I, I'm not leaving. I'm not going nowhere. So all of a sudden, you know, she starts, uh, you know, saying she's going to take the kids. You know, she's getting their coats. It's like two in the morning now already, you know. So all of a sudden, the one cop comes over. He goes, James, he goes, let, let me let me explain something. He goes, do you want your kids ripped out of bed at two in the morning and go some strange house? Or you want them to just sleep in their own bed tonight? So I, I looked at the guy and said, you know what? You made 100% sense. I said, you know what? I'm, I'll am i leave tonight. I'll leave. But I'm leaving. I'm, as soon as I said that, my mother-in-law came over and ripped my kid right out of, right out of my hands, right? Because I was on the rocket ship. Ripped it right out of my hands, right? So I looked at it. I was turning red, Dave. I was like, I was like all right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do that now because you got you grew some balls out down there. That's because they're the cops. No problem. I said, you know, I got up and I went over to my wife and I said, I'll tell you what. I'm leaving tonight on my own will. Not because you're throwing me out or the cops are telling me to get out. I'm leaving because I want to leave, but I'll be back tomorrow. And I walked out of the house with my mother. That's what we, that, was, that was that scenario. I can't believe I'm talking about it. You know, actually, I feel good at talking about this, Leslie. You know what I mean? It's getting, it's getting old shit out. You know, it's like taking I an old Chevy it. out of the highway and it's hitting the gas pedal. Thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. It fucking feels good, man. But I want to get back to the 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 the, uh, the wife and what why I want to bring up the victim mentality. Just because I feel that you might have a victim mentality about one area of your life doesn't necessarily mean you're you have that victim mentality across the board. But I do want to explain a little bit about why you might have this mentality because there's certain characteristics, again, that, that happens with this victim mentality. So let me know what you think of these characteristics and if you feel that you agree with them or you can identify with them or you're like, that's not me. Okay. So right. one is basically your experience. I'm glad we're having this session, by the way, Les. This is this is. I'm glad Dave. This is our intervention with you, Jimmy. That's why. You know, is... I I gotta apologize, Dave. I I I have trouble getting on the show. So I'm I'm working my ass off. I know. And uh, I know. I, I really want to do the show. You know how I feel about the show, but no. I I you know I, I I when I can't get on, it really upsets me, man. I, you're I not getting... the only look. You're no. not the only person who's in a situation like these, and that's yeah. why it's important that we do these shows because, yes, we're having fun with it, and you're telling the story, but. Obviously, you were very hurt 
yeah. by what of happened. Of course I was. And the fact that you had to leave your house with your children there, I mean, that there's nothing worse than that. What so, are you kidding me? Yeah. When, I, when I finally had to leave the house, I had nowhere to go. So I stayed at my mother's that night, and then the next day, my 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 brother had an apartment upstairs in his house, right? So the the, the girl was a swinger. She, they were married upstairs, right? So the poor guy didn't know his wife was a swinger, right? So the poor guy worked the night shift. This is what women do. This is what women do, Leslie. Okay, they, this is why guys are in jail because they end up killing their wives or throwing them out a fucking window. This is what happens, right? So the guy was going to work, right? And this son of a bitch was online inviting couples over the house. And they were all fucking upstairs. My brother was downstairs. You all heard him upstairs in the middle of the night. He heard the fucking the couch and the, you know, and the moaning. And, you know, my brother's like, my brother's like, what do I, he called me up. He's like, what do I do, Jeff? I said, what do you want to do? He goes, I, I want to tell the guy, but I, I, I know I'm just going to blow up if I tell him. I said, I don't know if you can tell the guy. He's going to kill her. I said, you know, you, you can't do it. This is before I moved in. So <laughs> this was going on and on. My brother was losing his shit. He couldn't take it anymore. Every 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 every, day, every time the guy left for work, this, this broad had a couples over. She was banging couples. All right? This is, I mean, you think the girl was like a normal girl. She's home cooking sauce and, you know, making, hi, honey. He gives him his nice, clean socks. Good to go, go to work, you know. I mean, you know, give me a call on lunch break. And meanwhile, guys, a couples are coming over there and she's banging them. I mean, what, 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 the, what the hell is that? So anyway, it blew up on them anyway. I don't know. I think he caught it. came home early one night and they caught them all. In, and then it just blew up and my brother just threw everybody out. So now the apartment was free. So this all happened simultaneously when my wife was throwing me out of the house. Thank God, right? So the next day, my mother came. My mother goes, you want the apartment? I says, yeah, I got nowhere to go. She goes, give me the check. It was 900 This is, I don't know how many years ago. She wanted 900 a month. So I wrote the check, and I was giving the check to my mother like this. Right? My fucking, I, and my mother grabbed the check, and I, would, I wouldn't let it go. And I was fucking, you know, because I knew if I gave that check, that was like the final step. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, Lizzie? Yeah. That was like yeah. giving that check was like, you know, that was, you know what I mean? I was taking that step. So I was, I, that's why I was going like this with the check to my mother. And then she finally, you know, we were fighting with it. Then she finally, she took it like that. You know, I'm like, all right, I'm in now. You know what I mean? It was, it was a big step. Big step. A huge then, you know, step. Yeah. It yeah, makes and, it reality. And then the, the son of a bitch threw me out in January, middle of the winter. The worst time of year, depressing as fuck. Everything's dead. Snow gets fucking dark at three o'clock. I mean, if you want to hang yourself just that alone, forget about the shit that just happened to me, right? So now I'm laying in bed that night. I had no fucking furniture. I was a fucking mattress on the floor. I didn't have time. I just moved in there. And I'm laying on the fucking mat. I'll never forget that night. It was snowing like a bastard. I'm laying there in my bed, and all of a sudden, I just started crying. It was like two in the morning. I just started crying. I was thinking about my father. Because he died, you know, in 72, and I'm at my life, and my kids over there, and I said, what the hell happened? My whole life's upside down. I don't even want to live anymore. I said, this is fucking horrible. I lay in the bed. I really suffered that night, to tell you the truth. But then as time went on, it got, you know, I got a little better and better, but it was, it was really bad. It was really bad. But uh, anyway, that's my story with that so far. You know what, Jimmy? You're actually confirming a lot of these characteristics that I haven't got to yet. So let's, <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's yeah. go through them. You know, it, I tell you, because, you know, when you go through a, a divorce, you're with somebody a long time, and you love somebody, and you've got children, and you, and you split up with somebody, and yeah. uh, unexpectedly, like, you know, I I knew probably eventually we would split up down the road, maybe when the kids were like, you know, 19, 20, 20, I didn't think it was going to two months and two years, the kids were, they were babies, you know what I mean? So it really, it tore my heart out of my chest, so when that bastard threw me out, you know, it was like a, it was like a fucking death. You know what I'm saying? When I lay, was laying in bed that night in the apartment, I was just, I was a wreck. I was destroyed. You know, my mother, she told me, like, she cried an ocean for me and mom because she knew how disturbed I was over that. And that, that girl threw me out, Leslie, like the garbage. And like, when you take the garbage out in the morning, that's how she threw me out after all those years with kids and everything. Like a, like the garbage. She took, just put it to the coldest shit, bro. Cold. I never seen anything like it in my life. I, I couldn't do that to anybody. I couldn't even do that to a dog. Jimmy, the thing is a lot of men, a lot of fathers go through this, which is really horrible because they give women rights automatically when it comes to the children. And that's not fair yeah. because sometimes right. the women are not fit. So, you know, what you went through, let me be, let me start like this, because I think you're, you're putting these blockades up right now because you're trying to convince me you're not a victim. So in this particular situation, as far as what happened to you, no, you're not a victim. But the victim mentality is what happens after that. So how does someone get to be a, have that victim mentality? So again, I'm not saying you're a victim, but you can fall prey to that mentality 
after this kind of shit happens to you because a lot of a victim mentality comes from experiencing multiple situations which you have where you had no sense of control because you didn't in reality you didn't this was done to you another is ongoing emotional pain that leads you to feeling helpless because you couldn't see your kids you were being denied certain kinds of things uh, rights, a place to live. This was your home, and you were booted out of your Leslie, home. She used to call the cops on me. You know why? Because I used to go, I used to go by the house in the middle of the night when it was snowing out, like a, like a like a fucking peeping tom. And I used to walk past the windows like this, and I used to look through the windows like this. You know, I watched my kids playing. That's yeah. the only time I was able to see them. You know, in the beginning, you know, and I used to watch them, and I, I was crying out there. And all of a sudden, the lights came on, and she opens the door. Get the fuck out of here! She's yelling at me. I'm like, 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 like I'm, I'm some fucking. Uh, you know, burglar or something. I was, I was your husband for 10 years. You're telling me to get the fuck out of here. I'm about to see my kids. You know what I mean? It was horrible. Horrible. Well, this is the third characteristic, betrayal by someone closest to you. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm, I, mean, I don't trust the, that's why I have a hard time in relationships today because I, I, it's, it's very hard for me to trust a female. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I've had a lot of experiences. I've dated a lot of women, but it never works out for me. And I don't know if it's me, maybe because I don't trust and I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't open up my, uh, my, my heart a hundred percent to anybody because uh, I'm distrusting. I don't know. Maybe I'm fucked up. Maybe I need, maybe I do need some fucking mental help. I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I have problems. I, I have, I have issues. I really do. We all have. Hard, listen, I'm a hard worker. I don't do drugs. I, 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 you know, I, I support myself, my house. I take care of all my own shit. I just have a hard time trusting people, man. That's just because of the shit that happened to me. You know what I mean? which is understandable, but part of it might be your choice. Now, I'm not saying you're to blame because she was a stripper, because to your mom's point, there's a lot of uh, shady females and they're, yeah. and they're, they're in business suits. So yeah, it's right. not that. It's right. about, you know, where was the communication? If she was truly that unhappy, why did it come like all of a sudden you had no idea what was going on? There's that lack well, of you trust. Know, I don't know, but you know, Leslie, I got to say, I did see some signs coming. I have to, I have to admit it. I mean, you know, uh, like her, her mother was a big part in, uh, I think, in her throwing me out of the house because she would always tell me, even after I got married, uh, she would always tell me, you know, she, she like would do it on the side. Like if I was in the kitchen and, and she was inside my wife, you know, she'd come over, she goes, this is not your house. And she whispered in my ear and I turn around. I'm like, what, what the <laughs> fuck did you say to me? You know? <laughs> She said she married me. You know, she was like the devil, man. Like, you know, I said, wow. this is not my house. I live here. I'm the husband. What do you mean? I, it's not my house. I know she bought the house before, you know, when I was dating her. And then she asked me to move in. That's what happened. But, you know, now I'm here. I'm the husband. I, you know, I listen. I'm not the type of guy that I don't want shit. You know, I'll leave what I came with. My shoes and one pair of underwears, you know. I don't, I don't care. I'm not like that. I don't want the house. I'm not one of these guys. I'll sign pre. If I met a rich woman, I'd sign a prenup in a minute. I don't give a fuck. I really don't care about the money. I just want a happiness and, and love and a, and a family unit and all that. But the mother was like a poison dart, man. She mm. was like, you know, holidays would come by. And I told this, uh, this Dave this in the past. Holidays would come by and I and she'd come over. She's oh, happy. Happy birthday, Jim. Like, you know, and then she hand me like a box, you know, and I go, oh, wow, look at this, man. I open it up. <laughs> You know, and it's a fucking skill saw. And I'm like a skill saw. I said, so okay, maybe, she, maybe, she, I mean, maybe, maybe she thinks I'm gonna be doing, you know, a project. I don't. know. Okay. Then I understand. Then like Christmas would come, you know, and she another box, and I I'd open it up. It was, uh, it was a fucking hammer, you know, and a, and a pair of flies. And I'm like, and then I finally You're dawned on Jimmy, you rebuilt the whole bitch, house. This right, That's why this he son of a bitch was buying me. Tools for the holidays and my birthday. I was thinking like she was being a nice lady. She was buying me shit to work on the fucking house. That's what she was doing to me. That's why she bought me a skill saw, a ladder, a level, a fucking a sawzall. I was like, boy, this woman's really uh, spending money at Home Depot. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was for, for putting me to fucking work. You know what right. I'm saying? And then when I used to go to Home Depot, she used to tell her daughter, Make sure he don't save those receipts. Get all those receipts from him. I'm like, why, why, why the fuck would she say that? I'm saying to myself, get the receipts. Because that son of a bitch knew. If I ever had to go to court, I could go to the judge and say, listen, Your Honor, here's all the receipts from Home Depot. All this shit I bought. Wood, plywood, roof, shingles, floor tile, fucking mud, concrete. That, here it is, Your Honor. Right? Here it is. That's why she told her daughter. <laughs> Tell Jimmy, get the receipts off him. Let him have nothing. I'm like, hey, I was like a, 
I was like a fucking like a some kind of a concentration camp over there. It was bad, really bad, unbelievable. So okay, Jimmy, if you and your hey, one time I was in the shower. That son of a bitch used to. She's so cheap. That son of a bitch. She made me go back to Home Depot for seventy five cents, man, because it, there was there was uh, too, too much money on some one of the things. She goes, oh look, it's seventy five cents. Where is it? I said, I don't know where it is. She goes, you gotta go back and get it. I said, you want to go back to Home Depot for seventy five cents? She says, yeah, I do. I says, oh, okay, give me the fucking receipt. And I went back to Home Depot and I argued with the cashier and I got the seventy five cents back. I came back and said, here's your fucking seventy five cents. Here. There it is. Yeah, shove it up your ass. This is what this bitch did. So one day she used to come over with these fucking Leslie, a bag of coupons, right? A big. And I, if my wife is watching this show, she can't say because this is 100 percent true. Okay, a bag of fucking coupons, <laughs> a bag, right? She used to come over and just drop them on the table. We're like if I if we weren't home, and I come home and I see the bag on the table, and I say, "Yo, your mother was here." No, she wasn't. Hey, what the, look at the bag on the table with all the coupons and everything, all the all the Giuseppe's, King Cullen. Look at it. look at them all. She says, "Well." She just wants us to, me to save some money. I said, yeah, but I don't want to just walk in the house, man. I don't like that. So, lo and behold, one day I, I was home from work early. I'm in the shower, Leslie. Shower! All right? And I'm showering. And I come out of the shower. I'm home alone now. I don't give a fuck, right? So I come out naked. I'm standing in the hallway. All of a sudden, I look. There's my mother-in-law standing in the kitchen looking at my shit, hanging and everything, right? And she just looks at me. And she don't even say anything. She, and then she just turns around and walks out the door. And I was like mortified. I said, this woman just saw all my shit, my, my gagnolas, my, my, just, I can't believe it. So I called up my wife. I said, your mother was just here. I just got out of that shower. I was totally naked in the hallway. And she's standing in the kitchen like nothing was happening. I said, I was, I said, I'm mortified. I'm, I, I froze in the hallway. I'm like shit hanging like that. I was just, I was just mortified looking at her. The fuck well, was that I was one to way to shut your, your mother-in-law up, wasn't it? Oh, that didn't stop her. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. So, Jimmy, if I had seen you from marriage counseling, yeah, we would have sat down with your wife at the time and talk about boundaries and how your oh, wife at the time needed to talk and stand up to her wife, uh, to her mother. You would have been out the back door. That would have been the boundary. <laughs> <laughs> because the thing is, is that here's the thing, Jimmy, as much as you, you can want a relationship to work, there has to be a foundation like a building. It needs a proper foundation. So yeah, love is great. There's got to be respect. There's got to be communication. And at least two of those are missing. Yeah, that was all missing. Absolutely. hundred percent. But the thing I is, I used to just walk in anytime in my house. I could be sleeping. I was like, like I tell you, I was coming out of the shower. Any, any, any old time, you know, because she had, my wife had cats, you know, Persians, four Persians, I, I fucking can't stay cats, but anyway, she had four Persian cats in the fucking house, you know what I mean, and they, they knew I hated them, so every time I was home alone, they would just run and hide, you know, they, they, they wouldn't come, they, they wouldn't show, these motherfuckers are smart, because they wouldn't show their face, I didn't even know where the hell they were, it wasn't even a big house, and these cats are big, and they just were gone. And then as soon as she came home, they would just come out of the woodwork. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, where were these son of a bitches, right? So, I mean, one time I had a fight with her because she she made me, you know, she used to cook for me. I got to say that. So one day I came home from work. She was already split to, to go to work. And I sat down and I said, I, I got the chicken out of the oven, right? A nice chicken leg, right? And I put a little corn, a little mashed potato in the dish. I set everything nice, my plate, right? Like that. You know, in those days I had the phone was ringing, you know, I was on a wall. So I used to, you know, I got everything all set up. And all of a sudden the phone rang, right? So I got everything all set up. I got up. I said, let me get that phone. I said, I said, hello? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. I'll talk to you later. Right? I turn around. The fucking cat is on the table with the chicken leg in his fucking mouth. Right? My chicken leg in his fucking mouth. Right? And all of a sudden, they said, you son of a bitch. I went to go get him. The, the chicken he fucking ran with the chicken leg. And now I got the fucking broom. Right? I'm running around the house with the fucking broom. I'm fucking trying to hit this motherfucker. He's running all over the house. And he had my chicken leg, this fucking son of a bitch. I couldn't find that rat bastard, right? All night, 11, 12 o'clock, whenever my wife came home, she comes home, the fucking cat comes out of hiding. I don't know where he was, this son of a bitch. I never found the chicken, the leg, the fucking bone, nothing, right? I got tortured in every area possible of that, that relationship. But you were doing something called enabling. You allowed her to get away with this. So whether it be the cat, the 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 wife, the mother-in-law, you allowed them to get away with this. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you, I got a little, I got a little note on that. Okay. I went to Cancun one year, right? Me and my wife. 
took a little vacation. She, of course, she brought one of her stripper friends. It was embarrassing as hell, man. She was swimming with the dolphins. Her ass looked like two basketballs with fucking dimples on them. And she was wearing an, a, a green force <laughs> up her ass. I'm sitting on the bleachers watching this son of a bitch swim with the dolphins with a gigantic ass. I didn't want to. I made like I didn't even know her. Because I, I was I was I was mortified that this girl was floating in the pool with that ass. I looked, the, the ass was so big it kept her afloat. It looked like two floating cheeks with the fucking with the green fuck. Anyway, so before we left, I cleaned the house because I'm a clean freak, right? I cleaned the whole house. I said, Your mother's not coming in this house. She says, Well, she might come for an emergency. I said, I don't give a fuck. She's not coming in the house. She goes, You my mother's gonna come. I said, No, she ain't. So I changed the fucking door lock. I changed the front door lock. I had a big fight with her. We came home from Cancun. I go in my bathroom. I see fucking napkins in the basket, in the, ba in the bathroom. And I cleaned that basket. I said, this son of a bitch was in the house. How the fuck did she get in the house? How she got in it? She had the key for the basement. I had no idea she had the key for the basement fucking door. I'm, I'm, I'm changing the door in the front door. She had the key for the basement door, this son of a bitch. She still came in the fucking house. So I had a big brawl with my Xbox. Your mother was in there. No, she was. I like, yeah, there's toilet paper, this shit in the fucking in the in the fucking in the basket. No, no, she did. Yeah, she did. She was big fucking brawl, man. Big brawl. But what that does that woman, tell you? That if fucking you're... woman would wipe her ass and throw it in the basket because she didn't want to flush it because God forbid the cesspool got overflowed because that's how cheap she was. She didn't want the fucking paper in the fucking cesspool, so she used to throw it in the basket. And I said, that's disgusting. Who the fuck throws shit pissing urine paper in a basket <laughs> wide open in a fucking like that in a fan? Who does that? <laughs> fucking unbelievable. Didn't you, like, didn't you, uh, oh, didn't you dig a cesspool at that house? Cesspool? Bro, I put in, I, yeah, me and my brother. I put I cesspools, I, I brick and sand patios. I dug the basement out by hand. She wanted, she wanted a full basement, so we had, a, we had a half a basement. So you go downstairs, and it was a half a basement, and the other, the other side was the dirt, like an, like an eave. You could crawl in it, right? Okay. She wanted me to dig that out. So what do I do? I used to come home from work with the fucking shovel like I was an Alcatraz. Like and I used to dig the, fucking digging the sand out of there, right? And I used you to have home Nelson people. You Mandela on the ch uh, hitting, you know, breaking up the rocks in, in, in South Africa when they yeah. got in prison for 25 years. And, you know. my, brother, my brother came over. I had a big pile of sand in the back. He goes, how the hell are you getting the sand out of here? I said, see those two fucking Home Depot buckets? I fill them up downstairs, and I walk them out, and I throw them in the yard. He goes, you're out of your fucking mind. He says, well, he goes, look at you. He goes, you, he goes, you can't do this. I was like quarter away through the basement, right? Leslie, quarter away, him, Leslie. Hold on. I told him, Leslie, it's like this was like a metaphor. You know how when people get in prison for life in jail and they dig their way out? Right, right. He, he was digging his way out of that. He didn't realize it, what he was doing, but metaphorically, he was digging his way out through the – to the ground to try to get out of that house. <laughs> I like that metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> Took weeks. Anyway, so I got another story. Quick one. <laughs> I'm at work. I'm upstate. Mm -hmm. I got to urinate. Because that's mm -hmm. one thing about truck drivers and probably all the truck drivers out there that know that we got to go to the bathroom. It sucks. Sometimes you're on a highway. You can't do it because the cars and there's no shoulder. And sometimes you got to hold it for a long time. So anyway, I'm upstate. I find a spot. I take a leak. I'm like, God, that God. Fucking all of a sudden, I get this pain. And I, I was done urinating. So what happened was the kidney stone lodged inside my, my penis in the middle. So now I can't get it out because oh. it's stuck in the middle of the penis, right? So now just imagine a tack stuck inside your penis hole. So as soon as you touch it, it, it hurts because... It's pinching you now. Now I'm putting my thing back on my zipper, and I'm like, "Oh my god, I can't even touch my shit." I got, I got it. In, I had to leave my pants unbuckled, and I'm, and I'm, 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 I'm on a highway, praying to God that I could, you know, build up urine again so I could get this son of a bitch out, right? I, I can't get all to me. <laughs> yeah, I know you can't. But I'm just saying, like, just I'm talking about torture and yeah. pain, and just it's just nonstop. You know, the, the the neck, the back, the fucking shoulder. I gotta sleep like this in the middle of the night. I don't, I don't even know where to fucking put the thing. I, I heat and pads on. Don't do jack shit. I take the heat pad and throw it across the fucking room. Yeah, I, mean, I went to the spine guy. He, he looked at me, left. He looked at my X-ray. I said, "What the fuck are you laughing about?" He goes, "Well, you got the back of a guy who labored all his life." I said, "Yeah, no shit. I didn't go to college." I said, "Fuck, I labored all my life." I said, "What is that? What, what is that? What, what's the problem with the spine?" He goes. 
He goes, it's just all, it's, it's, you know, you got the arthritis, it's a wreck. He goes, I said, well, I don't want, I don't want a herniated disc. He said, you, 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 you'll never get a herniated disc. You got no disc. He said, you, your spine fused together on, on by itself. I said, it did? He says, yeah. He goes, people pay money for that. He goes, you did it on your own. I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. I said, how about surgery? He goes, nah, he goes, you're too young for that. I said, well, how about an injection? You know, people get the injection. Nah, he goes, that's just a band-aid. He goes, I don't want to do I don't want to do that to you. I says, you don't want to do that. I said, I'm in pain. He goes, nah, he goes, hey, David, this motherfucker wants to inject pain on me. I left the office like I came, not that still walk, walked out, hunchback, got my car. Fucking ridiculous, man. Everyone's after him, Leslie. Apparently, it's that playing the victim and yet the world is out to get me. So here's the thing. Jimmy, it doesn't. The I'm fact that I just sent David a letter the other day. The Illuminati's after me. That's uh, that's not my fault. All right, they say I sent them the fucking letter. They fucking they they they, they want to recruit me. They said that I, I meet their criteria. They want to get a hold of me. I got. They wanted me to call the worshipful master. And what are you gonna do, Jimmy? I didn't call the son of a bitch. <laughs> Jimmy, do you want life to be better for you yourself? I don't know. That's a serious question. Yeah. I, mean, I, really, I tell you the truth, at this point, I've been so fucking miserable for years and years and years, I don't even know what feel good means. I don't even know what it, what it, what it means to be happy. I get up in the morning, I'm miserable. I make my same, see, I've been making turkey and salami sandwiches on a potato roll for fucking 15 fucking years. I eat the same shit every day in the fucking truck. An apple, some Pepsi, a fucking turkey sandwich. It's just, a, you know, it's just, a, you know, I, I heard a country song, I forget who the guy was, he said that, he, he, he does the same routine every day. They didn't, he didn't even know he was alive anymore. I related to that song. I was like, this son of a bitch is singing my song. Right? I don't, I don't even know if I'm alive anymore. I fucking do the same shit every day. <laughs> but do you understand why? Do you understand yeah, why? Yeah, because I got to make money. I got to keep the lights on in this motherfucker. That's why. I'm not talking about them making money. I'm talking about being miserable and why you have a fear of happiness. Well, please tell me because I want to know. Maybe I can apply it. <laughs> okay. Well, here's the thing. In order to, I don't think you feel like you deserve it. A lot of bad things happen. That doesn't make you the. Well, I'll be honest with you. Dave saw me when my mother died. I was very depressed. Dave, Dave mm. even saw me when I, I went to. I was his best man at his at his wedding. I was fucking depressed as hell then. And, and Dave was like, well, you, you know, I said I'm gonna move the. <laughs> I said I'm gonna move the floor. Get the fuck out of here. So Dave was like. Well, you got no support system down here, bro. Why are you going to move to Florida? I said, Dave, I just want to get the fuck out of here. I, I can't take it here no more. I, it's the same old roads. I pass my mother's house. I go to the cemetery. I, I got a routine going. I still go to the cemetery every day. I go to the cemetery. Six months later, this son of a bitch moves to Florida. I'm like, look at this fucking guy was just telling me, don't go to Florida. You got no, you're in New York. You got no support. And this son of a bitch takes six months later, he moves out of Florida. <laughs> Do you know what a chameleon is? Yeah, it's a bug that, that changes color on a tree, right? It adapts to the environment. Dave oh. was adapting. I might suggest you Look, consider. I love Dave to death, man. I, I, you know, I'm only breaking chops, but you know, it was just funny. You know how he's telling me stay, stay in New York, and he split. I was like, this son of a wife, bitch. happy life, just, Jimmy. You, you know, <laughs> they want to go. <laughs> But the thing is, is that there, there's a fear of happiness because you don't feel like you deserve it because you feel that you let, I'm guessing, your mother down. How's that? You tell me. There's some unfinished business when it comes to your mom. Because it's hard for you to leave New York because New York and your mom are very much intertwined. You can't yeah, leave I'm always New at York. the cemetery. My brother says, you know, my friends, they tell me, whatever friends I got left here, ain't many. And they say... You know, you can't leave New York because you're always down the cemetery. You feel like you're leaving your mother. That's why you're always down there. I mean, I'm down there for Mother's Day with the flowers. I, I give, I do cards. I light candles there. And sometimes I go in the middle of the night. You know, I, I, I I'm kind of destroyed over it still. You know, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know. If, I, I have friends that their mother died. They just went to work the next day. No problem. I, I was destroyed for four years. I even lost my relationship. I was with my girlfriend for 18 years. And uh, she she left me too eventually because I wouldn't get off the couch. I was so depressed. And she was like, "I'm I'm leaving." And I'm, I'm like, "Are you leaving too?" I said, "Why well, we can't talk about it?" She's packing up her shit. She took every last fucking even the fucking books that she didn't like. She took the books. She was even taking them off the shelf. I says, "Oh, you forgot one over here." It was unbelievable. 
And then she pulled away that day. I'll never forget it. And, and I'll, I still talk to my girl, you know, we're, we're friends. But as she pulled away in the driveway, I was standing there. My brother was with me. I had tears coming down my eyes, right? It's pathetic, right? As she pulls away, she, she stops the car, rolls the window. She goes, be happy. And she took off with the car. <laughs> and I was like, be happy. I'm like, wow, okay. Hey, I was with somebody for 18 years. And it just packed up every fucking thing down to your own and left. Took the last shit in the trunk of the car and pulled out of my driveway and yelled at the window to be happy. Okay. Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, I'll work on that. No problem. But here's Enjoy the thing. Life. Have a good time. Is, the victim mentality also has to do with the attitude of when that shit happens to you. So when she left, and that was yeah. horrible. I mean, both of these situations yeah. were horrible. How much yeah. did, did she weigh, by the way? How much Approximately. did she weigh? Yeah. Maybe 120, you know, something like that. Okay. So you just lost 120 pounds that day. It's learning how to pivot and learn how to say, okay, how do I see this as a positive? As much as it's painful, <clears throat> not to deal with this bullshit that you have to go through every day or someone pretending to be someone they're not. Someone who's not in someone who's in your life that's not. Well, I, I got to say, Leslie, it was kind of my fault too because I, you know, when my mother passed away, so my mother was in the house. We'll make quick, long, uh, quick, uh, quick story. I used to, I used to come home. You know, my daughter was living here too, so I used to come home all hours of the night, weird times. I used to, so I used to go on the couch because I didn't want to bother her because she had mm -hmm. to go to work and my daughter. So I used to just go right on the couch, and I, that's what I did. You know. Until my mother passed away, home, the hospital, on the couch, home, the shower, home, back to the hospital. And that's what I did. So when my mother passed away, I came home that night, two, three in the morning, whatever it was, and I got back on the couch, and I asked her to sleep on the couch with me, and she slept on the other couch across the way there, and we, we, we you know, we, she slept with me that one night, and that was it. Then she went back to the bed, but I wouldn't, I never left the couch. <laughs> I was on the, I, I'm embarrassed to say this, but I was on the couch for four fucking years four years so I, I was going to the Bremen's counselor in the va right and i a very nice lady and i i cried up a storm with her she had a box of tissues i was i was a wreck man i was wandering around the hallways in a hospital i i think i told dave this before i used to go by my mother's room when she passed away and i used to just like peek around the corner look at her room where she was you know and all of a sudden one day i was up there i used to i, I was this is like a year later i'm creeping around the hallways and i'm looking in the doorway and all of a sudden this nurse came just around the corner, you know, and she looks at me. She goes, hi, James. How are you? I said, oh, my God. I said, you remember me? She says, of course I remember you. She says, how you doing? I said, my God, I'm very embarrassed. I said, she says, no, don't worry. She says, let, let me tell you. She goes, a lot of people do what you're doing right now. I says, really? They do? She says, yeah, <clears throat> they do. I says, all right. I feel a little better. I guess I'm not losing my mind. She says, no, you're not losing your mind. You know, she says, you come anytime you want. So she left. I felt I so then I didn't go for like six months, you know, and then I went back and I was went to the, my mother's room again. I used to wander around the hallways. Like I used to go down by the morgue. I was fucked up. I was really fucked up. And then all of a sudden I went by her room again, you know, and I'm looking. I'm looking. All of a sudden the guy comes by with the fucking wagon. The maintenance guy is this. He goes, James, how are you? I go, oh my God, you too. I said, you, you know, you know me. The, the maintenance guy. Right? He, he goes, yeah, how you doing, brother? I says, yeah, I'm all right. I'm, all right. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm wandering around. He goes, yeah, don't worry, man. Do what you got to do, you know. Another nice guy, you know. But uh, eventually, so I told my 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 grievance counsel about it. I said, you know, Marianne, I'm. I'm wandering around the hallways in the hospital. And meanwhile, I didn't tell her, you know, this is like a couple of years later. I, I saw her for like two years. She said, listen, James, as long as you're not doing it, you know, years later, she says, right now it's okay. But if it was like five, six, seven years later and you're doing it, she said, I, I, I think you'd have, you'd have a problem, right? So I, I don't see her anymore, but here it is going on nine years. I'm still going down there. <laughs> so I, I would never go back and tell her because she told me that if, if I'm doing this seven, six, seven years later, there's something wrong with me. Here I am doing it. I passed the hospital. I'm looking out the window. I went as far as going in the hospital. One of the rooms, my mother, she has several different rooms, right? So one of the rooms, I, I, How I didn't get past it. Hold on. How did you get past security? I knew, I knew the guy, JL. I knew, it was my friend from high school. I know that's So that's how he got me in here, right? I used to walk in. He used to go, go ahead, Jimmy, go. They said, and my other friend, Pat Lefke. Yeah, I don't know if you know. He's a private eye. He helped me out of court, that guy, the private eye. So yeah. I used to go there, and they used to just go, get, get, go, get. And I used to go up the elevator up to the hospital and wander around. So one one time I couldn't I, I couldn't find that one room, and it was really bothering me because I used to cruise around the hospital and look at the rooms that she was in, right? This is how demented I got. 
So I couldn't find that one room. So I went upstairs and I'm going through all the hallways. And I said, shit, this is the this is the corridor. So I went down the hallway. I made a right, the last room on the right. I went in there. I said, this is the room. So what I did is I took the blinds, right? And I, I pulled the blinds all the way up, right? <laughs> up to the top. And then I went back outside, got in the car, drove around, and I saw the blinds all the way up, and you know, on the third floor. I said, oh, that's the room. Okay. So I, I was able to, you know, that's how, that's how so sick I was, Leslie. Sick. But okay, let me explain this because you're. But you're, it helped me. It helped me. You understand? That's why I'm it saying you're not. Because shit. I was alone with my shit. Nobody fucking helped. You know, once the loved one dies, you, you get the wake. Everybody goes to dinner and all that. Then everybody goes back to their life, and you're still stuck with the pain, bro. So what happens is, I was alone with my shit when I was at the cemetery late at night, lighting candles for my mother, or going past her house. Still, you know, the guy still lives. He thinks I'm a fucking weirdo because I passed, I passed his house and I waved. The guy's living there for fucking seven years. I passed the fucking house. He goes, "There's Jimmy again, right?" So, you know, this is the, but this is because I do this shit I'm, on my own. You know, it, it, I'm, I'm, I deal with my own pain. You know what I'm saying? But you haven't dealt with it. You're, you're, you're going back into the past, which is okay, but it's learning how to compartmentalize it. Right now, your mother, you and your mom had a really special connection. So now that she's not in your life anymore and you're, you've been basically abandoned by these other women, you have a, a, a very deep loneliness. So the connection that you I have- got abandoned by a ghost. How about that? Oh, so tell me about this ghost. So I, I met somebody on the phone, you know, but it was a friend. You know, she was from this neighborhood. You know, I'm not going to mention her name or anything, but we ended up talking on the phone and she knew a lot of people I knew and, you know, from the neighborhood because she's a Huntington girl, you know, but now she lives out of state. Anyway, so, you know, for, we, we talked for years and I never really saw her, you know, but we talked for years and years and she was a friend and she, you know, she always said that she, no matter why, she wanted me to be happy. She'd always be there for me. And then, uh, <laughs> I don't know, we got a little argument like recently. And uh, that's it. I never heard from her again. I ain't calling her either. So that's, but I never saw really what she looked like. She kept herself her whole life private. I don't know why, but whatever. And now, you know, I don't, I don't really see her anymore. So, so anyway. You think, you think that was a fake? Leslie, you think he was getting played by some like. Uh... All my friends told me that. They yeah. said it's probably a guy, you know, yeah. it's probably some dude, you know what I mean? But you talked on the phone, right? Yeah. Right. Oh, so it's probably some like five hundred pound, you know, girl. I don't know. She would. She would never really send me a like a a, a, a picture. Like, and I, I, I look. I didn't want a. I didn't want a, a nude picture or you know something perverted. I just wanted like something you know, right. like a. Uh, you know, standing by your car, going to work. Someone just takes right. a picture, or or right. maybe you 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 walk in the door, or, or you know, I, I I got nothing, nothing. And that's a big red flag. You know what, Leslie? He he is like a clone of my father. Okay, my father had a relationship with a woman. She was a real woman. We we saw pictures of her and everything like that. But he talked to her on the phone for ten years. Never yeah. saw her because too too lazy to drive up there and meet. And I think just like Jimmy, in the back of my father's mind, I used to tell him this all the time. He hated when I psychologized him because my father thought he was like the greatest psychologist of all time, and he and he was pretty good. But he. I said that you don't really want to meet her because as soon as you meet her, everything you've built up in your mind about this person is going to completely be destroyed because, because of the reality of the situation. It was more enjoyable for my father to talk to this woman, not ever meeting her. It's the concept. Yeah. Yeah. Because my father was a writer. So he built up this whole story in his head about who he thought she right. really was and what she really, you know. I I got I got to relate to that, Dave. I think that's what I'm yeah. doing. That's what I did. I too. You know, so too. But the thing is, I had really good conversations with her. And she was like, of course, a, a real, there, was like no, there was nothing, you know, there was nothing to lose. Yeah, you, you guys told right. each other what you wanted to hear. You know, you I know? used to joke with her and say, uh, when, when she, if she called me, I would say, oh, my subconscious is calling me. I said, what's <laughs> happening? You know what I mean? Because that's what it was like. But, you know, it was, we, we had good conversations, you know, all different subjects. And it was, you know, nothing, but it, but it just uh, fell apart at the, the, the friendship, whatever it was. But, well, because you wanted to, you wanted to actually see the reality of her and she, she couldn't do that. Leslie. When you, now that you've heard his whole backstory, which between the, the broken marriage, the kids, his mother passing, um, failed relationships, what's your overall assessment of, of, of Jimmy? And, and what, what's your solution? <laughs> the solution is definitely uh, I'm, I'm offering free counseling to Jimmy. So he should How about when I was a kid, I was seven years old, Leslie. I was in Queens. All right. We were in the pink houses. Oh, My cousin used to live there. Right. Right. 
And my, we used to, we used to get in the elevator. It was one of those old elevators. You walk in the elevator, got the gate. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then, yeah. the, then the, then you close the door, and I had the little hole with the fucking wires yeah. in the window. You know, and the fucking elevator smelled like urine and piss because we were in the projects, right? So we, they, they took my cousins, took me in the elevator, and we're going down the elevator. And my cousin Carl stops the elevator, right? And he opens the fucking door, and it was just a brick wall there. And I, I you know, I, I really wasn't close to forward, but then I became close to forward because now all of a sudden the elevator stopped. That she, he opens up the door and I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, you know. And my grandmother was like uh, five floors up, <laughs> and she was yelling down the elevator shaft, "Call Robin, let him go! Stop, stop that with him!" And I'm screaming, "Go on!" Because I had to follow this over the brick wall. I thought I was fucking dead. I was like in a tomb, you know. What I mean, and my cousins were laughing hysterical, and you know, my grandmother was screaming up on the fucking thing, "Get him out! Stop! You're torturing him! Stop!" You know, finally, they fucking closed the door. I got downstairs. I was, I was fucking ruined for the rest of my life. I can't even get in an elevator. Room. And I, I go to the VA. I take the fucking stairs, Leslie. All right, because I'm fucking what? ruined with elevator. I can't get in a fucking remember elevator. I, hold on. I remember I told you, just like my father. Well, when my father was a kid, they they were playing with. They had this big carpet, and they rolled my father up in the carpet. <laughs> and he he was like he felt like a mummy in a tomb. Oh, he said, oh, "Forget yeah. it." He yeah. couldn't get out. So after that, he can never go into small places. He couldn't do for MRIs, mm -hmm. elevators. Oh. He's just like you. you get the I can't go on an MRI. I went to the VA. The guy stuck me in that fucking cannon, right? He fucking puts I go. I walk in the room. He sticks me in this fucking thing like that with the headphones on. I go, yo, do me a favor. Can you play some doors or something? Or fucking some, you know, Led Zeppelin. He goes, yeah, no problem, Jim. You know, and he fucking puts me in the, in the fucking, the, the, the thing slide. You know how the MRIs, right? Slide yeah. you in there, right? So I was in there feet first. I went all the way in there. I go, oh, I'm fucking squeezing this fucking thing. The fucking wall <laughs> is fucking like right here, Leslie, right? I'm yeah. fucking in this, I'm in this fucking tube like this, right? Now. I, got, I got the headphones on. He's playing Aerosmith, right? And all of a sudden, you know, he talks to me on the line. Me. He goes, how you doing, Jimmy? He goes, you got the button. I had a fucking panic button in my fucking hand, right? He goes, yeah, I'm all right, right? I just hurry the fuck up. I said, hurry up. You know, so I, two seconds, I hit the button. I did that three different times, man. The guy had to keep running out and fucking get me out of the tube. Finally, I got up. I took the fucking gown off. I said, listen, fuck this MRI shit. I can't do it. I, I, just, I can't get in this fucking tube. I said, this is the fucking modern age. Just, this is all you got? You got to stick me in a fucking cannon? Can't you, can't you? What about the movies where you walk through the fucking airport and the X-rays your whole fucking body? You got to stick me in a cannon? He goes, Jimmy, you ain't the only one. He goes, don't get upset. Man. He, goes, he goes, listen, they got an open MRI in Stony Brook. He goes, maybe you better. I said, yeah, let me, let me go do that one, right? So I go to this other one. It's called an open MRI. But Leslie, it was two doors like this. It, it actually, it was two walls. And this is what it looked like. Two fucking walls like this, right? With a seat in the middle, right? And the walls open and close, right? So I get in the fucking thing. I sit on the chair. The fucking wall. And then it's got a bar. So it's got two walls like this. A bar in the middle of your whole altar, right? And the chair. And the guy puts his fucking helmet on me. I don't know what the hell it was, right? All of a sudden... He leaves the room. That's the part that freaks me the fuck out. Nobody wants to be in the room when they're doing this, right? So all of a sudden, the walls start closing in on me like this. Like, I'm fucking going like that. And the fucking helmet pops the fuck off. And then he puts some TV on, like uh, some mountains and streams. Like, that's going to fucking help me. I'm watching the mountains and streams, motherfucker. You're just crushing me in these walls. The fucking helmet flies off my fucking head. They come running out. The guy's laughing. I said, you're, you're crushing me. I said, I'm, I'm too wide for this fucking. He goes, let's try it again, Jim. Don't we take it easy. Take it. He puts the helmet on again. They fucking by sit in the chair. They, they leave the room. And the walls come in like this. The fucking, I, I'm squeezing like this. The fucking, the helmet pops off my head again, right? Finally, I get up. I get out. I said, that's it. I'm done. I said, I can't do this, man. I said, this is an open MRI. This is torture. I can't sit in this fucking thing. He goes, I understand, James. He goes, they have a different type at another place. <laughs> Maybe you should go there. I said, all right. I tried one more place. I took my cousin Denise with me this time. I said, you got to come with me. I can't, I can't go to these things by myself. So I go to this other MRI. It looked like I walk in the room. It looked like a giant bagel cut in half and open. Like, that's what it looked like, right? So I'm like, what do, how, how, do you, how does this work? I'm telling the guy. He goes, well, there's a table in the middle. It slides you out. You get on a table and it slides back in. And, and it's it's round, but it's you know it's kind of open, you know? Even though the fucking thing is like this, and you, when you get in the fucking bagel, it's still like this. But you can turn your head to the side and you can look out, you know, because it's open all, you know, all around, you know? <laughs> so I had my cousin come with me. And I had to put a lead jacket on. <laughs> She's sitting in the chair next to me. And the guy turns it on, and it's going, blah, blah, blah. I don't I mean, you know what the fuck. I mean, this is the modern age, man. What the hell is that? You know, you know I'm like, 
I felt like I was, what the, what the fuck? You know what I mean? And my cousin's trying to talk to me. She's japping away. I couldn't hear a word she was saying because the machine's going, ah, da, 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 me, 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 blah, blah, blah. I couldn't hear, I couldn't hear her. She was no fucking help. So I finally, I, I managed to get through it somehow. That's not and victim they- shit, Leslie. That's, that's just torture, man. That's what that is, okay? I didn't, I wasn't a victim. I just can't handle them fucking things, right? I got, I'm claustrophobic. I can't even sit in the back seat of a fucking car. I lose my shit. One time oh, I was in I, Vegas I, with Frank Zeppi. We got in that little Nissan, that two-door Nissan with the back window comes down like that. I was with Frank Zeppi and this guy, Andrew. So we were in Vegas. So we get out. We get in the car. Frank says, you get in the back. I says, all right. I get in the back. He closes the fucking door. That was it, man. Now all of a sudden we take off for traffic on the strip. I'm in the back seat. The fucking window's almost hitting my head because the fucking window's at an angle like this in the back. So I'm, I'm like this in the back seat. Two seats like this in front of me. Hey, I says, I told Andrew, I says, Joe, you got to pull over, man. He goes, what do you mean? I says, you, I, I, says, I can't take it back here. I got to get out. He says, I can't. Now we're in the middle of traffic. I said, listen, you don't stop this car. I am not responsible for what's about to happen. I'm telling you right now. I'm warning you right now. <laughs> he just pulled over. He opened the door and let me out. <laughs> <laughs> that's just part of my shit but you keep blaming other people and not take some person personal responsibility so the fact that you're you have issues with closed spaces i understand why because you've had negative experiences the victim mentality isn't that it's what happened after that is that you keep feeding upon it and it gets worse and worse and you haven't i don't know you haven't called me yet so tell me Tell me, Jimmy, if you're not going to take it seriously, talking is one thing, action is another. So, Leslie, I'll call you. Sounds good. Oh, no message from Jimmy. Oh, you need okay. sessions, Jimmy. No doubt. We did an hour just now. Yeah, but you, you want me to sessions. tell you? You want me to tell you shit that you know that really you know my deep shit? You want me to tell you? Yeah. We can. Yeah. But that's some deep shit, Leslie. I'm telling I think, you, don't you? I think you feel better, Jimmy, when you talk about it, don't you? It seems like you're releasing it. It's it's good because you've been holding it inside, Jimmy. And the problem is, is that you haven't had the right ear to properly hear it and guide you through that. Because it's nice to have friends. I'm not saying don't talk to your friends, but if they don't have that professional um, experience, they're not going to be able to take tell you what to do with that information, such as not being able to leave Florida. I understand why. And I don't know if you understand why. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm, 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 I'm wanting to be in Florida. So yeah, in New York, because you know it's not the first time, and I'm sure it won't be the last time you say I can't take it anymore. I got to get out of here. And you've had multiple invitations from John, from Dave, um, even getting like a truck or an RV and converting it into some type of stand with Mr. G. I think that would be cool. But the thing is, is that it's easy to fall back into old patterns when you don't yeah. feel like you deserve it. So a piece, yeah. just a piece, not not the full thing. A piece of it is learning how to forgive yourself. And I and I think there's a blockage there. So I'd love to work with you on uncovering that blockage, removing it, and help rewiring your brain without doing a lobotomy. So you, you, you might have touched on something there, like you know, I, I don't deserve the thing. I don't know why I, why I go there. I don't know. I had a I had a I had a you know I I, I can't say I had a bad childhood. I had a very good child. I had a tough father, though. You know that 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 did play on me a little bit, but um, the the not deserving part, uh, there might be some truth to that. And uh, and and then the other thing is, you know, uh, it, 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 like, I'm always waiting for the other, you know, the expression you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm always waiting for the other shoe to drop. You know what I mean? So if something's going, something looked like it's going good, I don't get excited about it because I'm like, yeah, it's, <laughs> I, something's gonna something's gonna happen. You know, and usually. Usually it does, you know, so. You get what you think about, whether you like it or not, right, Leslie? Yeah, I mean, there's that, again, that fear of happiness because he doesn't feel like he deserves it. I tried that, too, to project positive uh, thoughts and, 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 you know, like, you, you can't, you know, you can't get on a highway and think about getting in a car crash. You just got to go for it. You know what I mean? Like, I, under, I understand what Dave said that, you know, you get what you, what you think. And it's true. It even says it in the Bible. God says, you know, be careful what you put in your mind and be careful what you speak because it has power. It does. I totally agree with that. You know, but I don't know what happens. I always kind of resort back to, I, okay, I don't know. I guess. Comfortable I, for you, Jimmy. You got it. That's what's comfortable. You got to, you got to have someone like Leslie. So when you start thinking those negative thoughts again, she could redirect you. You need someone to redirect you because otherwise, 
you know, otherwise you're going to keep going right back to what's comfortable for you, which is misery. Yes. Because well, on look, one end, you're look, comfortable. Look, 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 listen, yeah. Leslie, like, today, yesterday, I worked all fucking day. I worked my ass off 14 hours. I can't even, I don't even stop. I couldn't wait to get home. I had to go to the bathroom. I had to poop. I couldn't just, I couldn't wait to get home, right? I get back to the yard. I back the truck in. I go in my bag. My fucking car keys are gone. I'm like, where the fuck are my car keys? I can't believe this. And I had to go to a wake. My friend's, one of my good friend's dad passed away. I can't go at night because I got to get up at 1230. So I had to do it in the afternoon. I, I got back to the yard. It was like 2 o'clock or some shit like that, 2.30. And I was like going crazy looking for my keys. Crazy. Couldn't find them. I don't know where the hell they were. I don't know. I'm getting dementia. Why? I don't know where the hell my keys were. I never lose my keys, right? So I'm going nuts. I'm looking under the seat in the back. I'm looking all in behind underneath the dashboard. I'm fucking looking at my bag on the floor. No keys. So finally, I had to wait for one of the kids, the mechanics. Thank God he took me home. I had a spare key home. Thank God I had the brain to buy a spare key a couple of years ago. And I had the scare. So he took me all the way home, <laughs> all the way back. Mm -hmm. And I never used the, you know, the old. You know the the key thing for the yeah, door. Yeah, I never yeah. used them. I used the fucking the, the, the lock. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So I, I got the key. And I couldn't. It wouldn't turn. And the kid left. <laughs> so now I'm standing there in the street. And I gotta go to the bathroom. Like I can't even tell you. I was uh, holding my legs together. Right? I can't. Hold on, I don't hold wanna, on, Jimmy. I don't, Jimmy, hold on. You went back to your house to get the key. Why didn't you go to the bathroom? Bathroom, right yeah. Because the kid was waiting for me. I had to get back to oh, work. You know what I mean? Because the, you know the the head mechanic says, you know, take Jimmy home. Come right back. So I didn't want to do that to him, man. So, you know, I just ran in the house, got the key, jumped in the car. He took me back. He dropped me off by the car. He left. And I'm over there. With, what the fuck? And I'm with the fucking key like this. I'm like, you son of a bitch. The fucking key won't turn you. So I'm struggling with. I, I don't want. I was going to snap the fucking thing off. So I was losing it. You know what I mean? I know how I get. You know what I mean? But I was, I was trying to stop talking to myself. I said, Jimmy, stay calm. I said, play with it like a like a woman's thing. You know, play it. Go easy. Nice. Go easy. You know, nice. Pet it. You know. He ease it in, you know, he, and I was going in and out, you know, trying, you know, I was beside, and finally I heard it go click. I said, son of a bitch, I opened the fucking door, the alarm went off. I started it, you know, thank God I got out of there, you know what I mean? But I missed the wake oh. and I had to call the guy and tell him. I said, I don't know if you believe me. I called him, I said, Bernie, I said, I lost my keys. I, I, I'm, I'm stuck in the yard. He's like, all right, don't worry about it. Thanks for the call. I'm like, oh my God, he probably thinks I'm lying, you know what I mean? How far, Hold on. How far is your house from the yard? It's about a half hour. Oh, so you were like that? Oh my God! Oh my what a God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, it's, it's, I'm in Bayshore. I'm in Huntington. I had to go all the way down oh Deer Park, God. down Jericho, all the way up Jericho towards past 110, all the way the fuck up there. So Jimmy, I mean, so I, and then I was proud of myself because normally I just flip the fuck out, but I was staying calm, you know, because the kid was there. And I said, Luke, could you take me to my house? He goes, I got to ask Jay, but he said he okayed it, and I was staying very calm. And, Jay, yeah. and he kept saying to me, are you okay? Jim? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I said, I said, there's nothing I could do about it. I lost the keys. I said, you know, maybe they're upstate. I said, you know, I was trying. I was just, I was, talk, I was talking to myself. Stay calm. Oh, about the Stay keys? calm. Yeah. Huh? Did anyone ever call you about the finding your keys? No. So I went upstate this morning, and I looked where I got out, because that one spot where I got out the dump is all, like, just it's, it's just dirt and shit. Right. So if the keys fell, I probably wouldn't have heard them, because... Uh -huh. You know, so I figured maybe it was there, but I got up there and they weren't there, and that was it. So I don't know where the hell they are. So that's it. But I, but I, but I, but I did remain calm. That's cool. But one that's thing to upgrade, and, and, and I know that's that requires some self control. So I'm very proud of you, Jimmy. And I hope you're proud of it yourself. Did. I was this close, this close to start kicking my fucking Jeep door in. This fucking close. I was getting ready to lose it. I was gonna snap the key off in the lock. And then I was gonna start kicking the fucking door in. I was gonna fucking lose it, man. I, I I felt I felt my blood pressure coming up. You know what I mean? But I knew I had to stay calm, and I knew it. And I and I was I was proud of myself. A, he knew if he got arrested, he would have to take a shit in in, in a jail cell toilet. That's that's really what it, what it was. <laughs> and that ain't no Jimmy, joke either. You know we love you. I love you, man. Uh, I hope the show was was. Therapeutic for you. I, I really think you should take that's it. Up on a rock I ride. had more stories to tell you. Yeah, you got no time well, now. Well, you got to have to contact her privately for that, unless you want to do part two of this next week. <laughs> Let's do part two, man. I got, I got, I got, I got some right. other shit I got to air out. I, I love the stories. I, I'm sure <laughs> the viewers do too. So, <laughs> and there's a lot that I didn't get a chance to say, so I can't wait. Let's do it. Right, 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 Let's do part two next week. We'll do part two. Sounds same good. bad time, same bad station, and. Uh, 
Uh, thank you for being so honest, Jimmy, because it, yes. a lot of people have trouble really, you know, revealing, you know, intimate details about their life and what they've gone through. So I think it's going to help a lot oh, of people. That's true. Yeah, it is. I, I, I have, I have uh, my own brother, you know, he's, he's very, uh, you know, I always told him you should have been like fucking Don because you don't say shit. I don't know when you're happy, when you're sad, yeah. you know, I, I, I went over his house the other day, make a long story short, I went over and I, and my nephew was there, Nico, right? It was a Saturday, and I pulled. I was calling my brother off the hook. He didn't answer the phone. I said, "This fucking guy." I said, "I gotta go over there." So I went over there, and I ring the doorbell. Nico comes to the door. No, actually, he didn't come to the door. I'm ringing the bell, ringing the bell. All of a sudden, he pulls up in the car with his girlfriend. I said, "Nico, where's your father?" I goes, "I don't know. He's upstate. I think he went upstate." Upstate? I said, "What the what, what the fuck is he doing upstate?" He goes, "I don't know." You don't know why your father went upstate? I said, why? Who are you going? He goes, some guy. Your father went with some guy upstate? And you, you sit there, you tell me you don't know why, and you don't even know who the guy is? I mean, aren't you concerned? He goes, I, I don't know. I, I don't know, Uncle Jimmy. I, don't know. I said, all right, don't worry about it. Go, 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 go back what you're doing. I said, I, I got to go. And I, I left. <laughs> all right, well, part two. Next week, Jimmy the Bull, Leslie Timble, myself, on our in therapy. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next week.